important, they had but to go there and make themselves known by a certain sign and token. The sign consisted of a grip with a full hand and the magical word Shalom Alakim. The masuza on the doorpost was the countersign. Shema Israel, hear O Israel, was the password. End quote. Indeed, to this day, all local chapters of the B'nai B'rith are referred to as lodges, a practice borrowed whole cloth from the Scottish Rite. When Moses saw some Jews of this B'nai B'rith type who tried to make their religion into a pagan secret society, he took the calf which they had made and burned it in the fire and ground it into powder. And Moses returned unto the Lord and said, O oh, this people have sinned a great sin, and made them gods of gold. The majority of Jews in America during the first generations following independence were opposed to the idea of a Jewish Freemasonic secret society. Most Jews are ordinary people like all of you listening and don't know anything any more about what's happening in the world than you do. They are lied to just like you are lied to. They are deceived just like you are deceived and they are easily manipulated because throughout the history of the world they have been chosen as the scapegoat, as the enemy. And because of that, they can be easily led by organizations such as B'nai B'rith and the Anti-Defamation League. Israel Joseph Benjamin a noted European Jew in his memoirs Three Years in America, 1859-62, to wrote of the B'nai B'rith that, quote, This is a secret society like the Freemasons with passwords and the like, and was quite a new phenomenon for me. Still, I think the existence of such a society not at all necessary, end quote. He was right, ladies and gentlemen. The secret agenda of the B'nai B'rith, like that of the southern jurisdiction of the Scottish Rite, was to destroy the Union and pave the way for reconquest. The ultimate goal, one world totalitarian socialist government. You see, B'nai B'rith is not the synagogue. B'nai B'rith is not Jews. B'nai B'rith is not Judaism. B'nai B'rith is just another organ under a different name of the ages-old Illuminati who practiced the ancient mystery religion of Babylon in secret. They call themselves the Great White Brotherhood, the Brotherhood of Man, the Illumined Ones. And if you've listened to our series on Mystery Babylon, you know the rest. Two leading B'nai B'rith allied figures would serve as exemplars of the strategy for permanently dividing the Union. One was Judah P. Benjamin and the other August Belmont. Benjamin, who lived from 1811 to 1884, was born in the British West Indies to Sephardic Jewish parents who moved to Charleston, South Carolina in 1927. In 1827, I'm sorry. He was inducted into the Charleston Hebrew Orphan Aid Society, one of the precursors of the B'nai B'rith. After attending Yale College in New Haven, Connecticut, he was forced to drop out under a cloud of scandal. Benjamin surfaced in New Orleans, where he quickly won the patronage of John Slidell. Slidell, a United States senator who would later play a pivotal role in the Confederacy and sponsored the career of August Belmont, who married Slidell's daughter. With Slidell's assistance, Benjamin became a prominent attorney, even serving for a period of time in the United States Attorney for New Orleans. Benjamin gained notoriety for covering up the growing terrorist activities of the Scottish Rite-sponsored Knights of the Golden Circle, while serving as the local federal prosecutor. In 1852, Benjamin was elected United States Senator, a post he retained until the outbreak of the Civil War in 1861, when he resigned to serve the Confederacy. Benjamin was the first Confederate Attorney General. He later served as Secretary of War and Secretary of State, ultimately running the Confederate Secret Service on behalf of Confederate President Jefferson Davis. 
and as the Mossad does today, he used innocent Jews in the north who were opposed to the dissolution of the Union to furnish information to the intelligence arm of the Confederacy. Judah Benjamin escaped to England following the defeat of the Confederate secessionist plot. It was Benjamin's Confederate Secret Service which organized and supervised such figures in the assassination of Abraham Lincoln as John Wilkes Booth and his accomplice, John Surratt. Benjamin was charged with sedition for the Lincoln assassination, although he was never brought to trial due to his protectus status in England. With the help of a leading Rothschild political asset in England, Baron Pollock, Benjamin continued his legal career in London. He never abandoned his commitment to subvert and destroy the American Republic. However, as a wealthy lawyer for the British merchant oligarchs, Judah Benjamin collaborated with other exiled Confederate and Masonic strategists in England, such as James D. Bullock and Robert Toombs. Benjamin's continuing preoccupation with defeating Reconstruction is indicated in letters he wrote back to the United States with complaints such as these. Quote, I have always looked with the utmost dread and distrust on the experiment of emancipation so suddenly enforced on the South by the event of the war. God knows how it will all end, end quote. And then he went on to say, quote, The South is kept crushed under Negro rule. I can never consent to go to New Orleans and break my heart witnessing the rule of Negroes and carpetbaggers. Nothing is so abhorrent to me as radicalism which seeks to elevate the populace into the governing class. End quote. And that indeed is the sympathy of all of those who call themselves illumined. You see, we are all nothing but cattle, stupid animals, and they are the only ones who have truly mature minds, and thus are the only ones with the right to rule. The Ku Klux Klan None of you were ever taught this, but it's the truth. The Ku Klux Klan, KKK, was founded in Tennessee in the late 1860s by the Southern Scottish Rite leadership under Albert Pike. The KKK drew its membership from the pre-Civil War Knights of the Golden Circle. Judah P. Benjamin's early role in sponsoring and protecting both the Knights of the Golden Circle and the Ku Klux Klan offers a crucial insight into the B'nai B'rith. ADL's later role in fostering the revival of the KKK in the post-World War II period. We shall return to that sordid tale, ladies and gentlemen, later in this series of broadcasts. Another Rothschild and B'nai B'rith ally who enjoyed the political patronage of ARC Confederate John Slidell, August Belmont, was Judah Benjamin's northern counterpart, a private secretary to the British House of Rothschild, who arrived in New York City from London in 1837. Belmont rose to the chairmanship of the Democratic Party, a position he held for 20 years. Belmont was a leading advocate of free trade and states' rights, both cornerstones of the British reconquest scheme. Prior to his emergence as a leading figure in the National Democratic Party, Belmont worked closely with the Charleston, South Carolina, B'nai B'rith in fomenting radicalism among Americans' youth. The effort was in this case run directly by the Mother Lodge of the Scottish Rite in England, then under the command of Britain's Prime Minister, Lord Palmerston. At Belmont's behest, Charleston's B'nai B'rith leader, Edwin de Leon, wrote a pamphlet in the early 1850s entitled, The Position and Duties of Young American. De Leon, whose family were slave traders, B'nai B'rith founders, and later leading Confederates peddled free trade and openly advocated a strong Anglo-American alliance. While by today's standards the appeal for a strong Anglo-American alliance may seem palatable to some, back in the middle of the 19th century this was borderline treason. Ladies and gentlemen, the phone is ringing off the wall as the fanatics try to get through to deny this. It is the truth. The original research was done by the Executive Intelligence Review. Kaji has duplicated the research down to the T to make sure that this material is true. 
and it is absolutely 100% legitimate and historical truth from beginning to end. And that's why the ADL and B'nai B'rith has never sued the Executive Intelligence Review over this report. Belmont's Young American...